Hi, I'm Nikki Ferris. Getting your driver's license is one of the most important and exciting days of your life. When you go to the MVD, you'll be tested on how well you know the rules of the road as well as your driving ability. You'll also be asked a very important question. Do you wish to become an organ donor? The reason you're asked this question is because right now thousands of people are waiting for a life-saving transplant. That's when an organ is recovered from one person's body and transplanted into another. But that can only happen when you say yes to organ donation. Because lives hang in the balance, the state of New Mexico has made it easy to register to become an organ donor after you pass away. Over one million New Mexicans have already signed up. Whether or not you choose to join them will affect your family and may even save someone's life. Someone like Sarah Donay. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Perfect. Oh, man. I love it. I love it. I love it. I was born with a fatal liver disease called biliary atresia, and the only cure for that is a liver transplant. So at 21 months, I received my first liver. Um, around a year later, when I was three, I received another liver, but I've had this one over 17 years. It's been doing great. If Sarah had not had a liver transplant, she would not have made it to the age two. An organ donor and his uh, family saved Sarah's life. And uh, I thank them every day. I've been modeling for two years now. It's coming along really great. I have been in three runway shows so far. You know, I live every day to the limit. When I got my ID, they asked me, do you want to be an organ donor? No questions asked, I said yes. Of course I do. I'd like to change someone's lives like they changed mine. Knowing that after you pass away, you can help someone like Sarah have a long and full life with a bright future, perhaps organ donation is right for you. Are you signed up to be an organ donor? No, but I really want to. I'm talking to my parents about it right now. Uh, not yet, I'm actually gonna be in the process of signing up. I don't have my license yet, so no, but I think I'm going to be one day. I'd like to, yes, because I know it's for a good cause. Where do I sign up? When I went to the DMV, they didn't really talk about it, actually. A lot of teenagers in my high school didn't really know anything about it. Do you know how old you have to be to be an organ donor? 15. 16? What's it, 18? 16? I'm not sure. 18? 18. I think I heard 13 from somewhere. You can sign up at the age of 15 when you get your provisional driver's license. This is your legal and valid decision to be a donor. If you are under the age of 15, a parent or guardian must also sign. Also, you don't have to wait until you get your driver's license to sign up. You can do it when you get an ID card at the MBD, or you can sign up online at nmdonor.org, or in Spanish at donevidanm.com. What a difference one donor can make, saving up to nine lives through organ donation and up to 50 lives through tissue donation. The need for donation is huge. Over 100,000 people nationwide and 1,000 New Mexicans are waiting for a life-saving transplant. I'm here with Philip Jones. Philip was once on dialysis and knows the importance of organ donation. So can you tell me, what is dialysis? Dialysis is a backup for your kidneys. You know, your kidneys aren't able to function as well as they should. So dialysis basically backs up what your kidneys can't do. They put a tube basically in your stomach around your bladder and your kidneys. It filters your, your blood and then it comes back out into a, a bag. I had to do mine for nine hours. I, don't, I didn't want to do dialysis. I wanted to keep continuing my life and be able to stay out later and stuff like that. But then I realized it's your health, it's your life. And you want to live as long as you, you, know, you can to be able to do things that you've always wanted to do. So how has your quality of life improved um, after receiving your new organ? Um, it's improved a lot. I was 17 when I had my transplant and I felt great. I felt so relieved after the fact that I had it because honestly, I, to myself, I was thinking in my head like if I didn't get it soon, I wasn't really going to be here that much longer because my doctors kept saying, you know, your kidney function is going down, they're still going down, they're going down, they're going down. I mean, people don't realize until they see it how much it helps somebody's life after having a transplant. But for some people waiting for a heart, liver, or lungs, they don't have the option of a machine to keep them alive. Only organ donation can save them. It's not an easy process to understand, so I've come to meet with transplant surgeon Dr. No. Irvin Ruzix in order to find out more about organ donation and transplantation. Nikki, there's two types of donors. Um, the most common type is the deceased donor, which means that uh, somebody has died and have volunteered to donate their organs to help save the life of somebody in need. Are you yourself an organ donor? Absolutely. 
And what would you tell teens who are thinking about becoming organ donors? I think there are very few things in your life where for just a few minutes of effort, you can make such a huge impact, not just on, on one person's life, but on the life of their family and their entire community. It's an opportunity to give the gift of life. It doesn't take much to be affected by organ and tissue donation. Normal teenagers like Janine Makarag can have a need overnight. So I was playing basketball and my coach asked me to do a one-on-one -on -one demonstration and I had to go full out 100% and when I went to shoot for the layup, my teammate pushed me against the wall and my ACL had torn. The ACL is a ligament that helps bend your knee and be able to do regular activities throughout the day. The simple things, I, I just couldn't do it anymore. Like the pain really had a big impact on me and the injury had a big impact on me. Being a donor, you'll help a lot of, a lot of people. You'll prolong life. Like what happened to Janine, I didn't even know that she's gonna can come back to uh, any kind of sports again. Someone was able to donate a ligament to me and I, I realized how important it was to me. And especially because I don't know who the donor was, it just makes me that much more grateful for it. So when it comes to registering as a donor, it really is a matter of life or death. But most importantly, life. If you decide not to register, that's okay. It's a personal choice. But if something tragic does happen to you, the decision to donate does not go away. It becomes a responsibility of your family. And the circumstances under which they have to make that decision could not be more difficult. So my twin brother, Matthew, was a football player and I was a cheerleader. And it was the first uh, varsity game for both of us. And Matthew was on the field. He went to go block somebody when they hit, um, something went wrong and Matthew got hurt. When the doctors came to us and told us that Matthew had brain death, we didn't really know what it was. In essence, we have a situation where there's absolutely no blood flow into the brain. It is not a coma, it's not a permanent vegetative state, it's death. And things that can cause brain death are severe injuries to the head where the brain would swell and there's no room inside the skull, or a severe stroke. So they told us that if you don't name Matt's organs, he probably will be a hero one day. And I told a lot of people that my son's a hero right now because uh, he saved four lives. We knew the way that he lived his life, he would probably have said yes to organ donation, but we did have to make that decision for him. And it really would have been a lot easier had he have come to us you know, beforehand and say that it was one of the things that he had hoped for or wished for if something happened to him. It's hard for high school students to grasp the fact that something might happen to them or one of their loved ones. Usually they're stubborn like we were and they don't think about an accident can happen. And <laughs> so you should register to be an organ donor. <laughs> For the family of Matthew Zaragoza, the fact that he and his brothers and sisters learned about organ donation in school made his parents' decision to donate much easier when Matthew passed away. The state of New Mexico has made it easy for residents of driving age to register to become an organ donor. You can sign up at the MVD or online at nmdonor.org. It only takes a few minutes and is completely confidential. Are you signed up to be an organ donor? Yes, I am. Yes, I am. Yes, of course. I am, actually. I signed up. Yeah, I talked it over with my parents. Uh, they were a little iffy at first, but I think they're supportive. They understand it's for a good cause, and uh, especially now because my uncle's in need of organs. When my brother donated his organs, he gave the ultimate gift of life to five people, and I definitely consider my little brother a hero. Oh, this is my grandpa, Lonnie Johnson Sr., and he donated his organs. He passed away five years ago. He helped save and enhance 11 people's lives. From him donating the organs, it feels like it's a part of me too. My little brother, he's 12 years old. They found out that he has a liver disease that just is genetic. And I want everyone to know that they can check yes, be a donor, save lives, and you could even save my brother's life. When you go to the MVD to get your driver's license, remember to answer the question, do you wish to be an organ and tissue donor? If you do, check yes to organ and tissue donation. 
When you receive your license, the red heart will be right next to your photo, indicating that you are on Donate Life New Mexico's donor registry. And because you made this decision for yourself and for your family, you just might save someone's life.